Hi, I'm Todd Henderson. Today we're going to install the Backflip Fibermax on this 2017 and up body style Honda Ridgeline. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the two top tie-down cleats in the front and the back of the, of the uh, Ridgeline. We're going to use a T50 Torx bit. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to locate our passenger side rail. Uh, now, the passenger side rail is going to have a cushion that goes towards the bulkhead, and it's also going to have a cutout that goes towards the tailgate. Um, on the inside of that rail, it's going to have a seal that goes up against the bed cap. It's essentially going to hang on top of the bed cap, just like so. So we're going to locate one of our rail brackets, and we're going to slide it into our rail. And this lines up and slides right in, just like so. We're going to run the first one all the way up to the front. And the second one, once we mount that in, we just want to get it a little bit past uh, the cutout. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our tailgate bracket and we're going to mount it up to our, uh, our rail bracket. And we've got a tap plate. This, this has uh, uh, holes that have threads that are tapped into that tap plate. It's going to go back behind. We want to make sure we line all three of those holes up on, for each, each one of those sides. We're going to use one of our provided Allen bolts, uh, run that into that tap plate through our rail bracket, through our uh, tailgate bracket, and into the tap plate. Do that with both of those holes. Once those are lined up, we're going to use our provided Allen wrench, and we're going to get those not quite tight, uh, not even really snug. We're just going to get those uh, kind of loosely put in there just so that we can still wiggle that around uh, and still slide this back and forth. Now our front bracket needs to go in to where uh, you, you're going into your oval holes, not into your round holes. Uh, and the oval holes need to go back again behind uh, that, uh, that bracket. And then the tap plate, our supplied Allen head bolts the thread into the tap plate, and there again, we're just gonna put those in, but not, not to where they're snug or tight. Uh, we wanna be able to wiggle around a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, now that I've got both those brackets installed uh, on, loosely in place, I'm gonna set this up on top of the bulkhead, or on top of the, the uh, side rail, push it all the way up to the bulkhead, and make sure that this bracket is slid all the way back to where it will hit where the tie-down cleat is my bed rug back. Now if you don't have a bed rug, of course you can just skip the part of getting the bed rug out of the way. I'm going to slide that down in. It's going to hold it in place for me. I'm going to go ahead and line up the holes for my Torx bolts from the factory, go through the holes in the tie-down cleat, through the bed rug, and, and mount that plate uh, to my tailgate pillar. All right, now I've gone ahead and lined up the uh, cab bracket uh, to the tie-down cleat in the front. And I'm going to run the factory tie-down cleat uh, uh, bolts back through that, through the tie-down cleat, through the bed rug, and through the bracket into the holes. Now, this tie-down cleat I do have to turn upside down so it goes back in, but at least I get to keep my tie-down cleat in the front. Next, what we want to do is make sure, first of all, that this rail now is all the way up against the bulkhead. Um, if, it, if, it, if you have a hard time sliding it forward, it's good to rock it back and forth a little bit while you push forward on it to get it forward. Go ahead and tighten it down with your provided Allen wrench. Tighten down all four of those Allen head bolts. Now, once we got all lined up and tightened down, repeat the exact same process on the opposite side. Now, before we install our cover, we're going to want to do our block seal. Now, that what we're going to do, that seal is going to face towards the tailgate when the tailgate closes. Um, the bottom side is going to be open. The top side is going to be closed. We're just going to fit that right into the end of the extrusion and slide it in place and do that on both sides. All right, so now first thing I'm going to do is locate 
my passenger side rail. Now I'm going to find that that's going to have uh, on, on one side it's going to have a seal that's going to rest on top of my backflip rail. Um, I'm going to have an aluminum tab that hangs out into the bed of the truck. I'm going to take uh, one of my drain tubes, I literally just cut that in half. Uh, I'm using this end to push right over top of the drain cup. Now I'm going to lift this up, set it on top of the rail. Um, this uh, truck has a bed rug complete bed liner, so all I'm going to have to do here is take and fit this drain tube back behind the bed rug, and that is installed. Um, you've got weep holes down up underneath here uh, that, that will allow the water to drain out between the bed rug and the truck. I'm going to take one of my clamps, spread that clamp apart, and then set it up into the rail uh, to, to clamp these two rails together. Now I want to have it up as high as it goes while it's still married into uh, that rail. So the grooves in the clamp need to match up to the grooves in the rail. I'm going to hold that together and pull it kind of close to the bulkhead. So as I tighten that down by hand, I'm going to rotate that rail up and continue to tighten it down. Next, I'm going to take a 9 16 socket uh, with a ratchet and I'm going to start to tighten that down. Once that gets to where it's starting to bite down, I'm going to finish pulling it towards the bulkhead. I'm going to pop it from the top to seat that rail against um, the, the ridgeline rail. And now I'm going to finish tightening that clamp in place. Next clamp is going to install the exact same way as the first clamp. Um, I just set it in place, make sure it's married into uh, the grooves on the rail, hold it together, tighten it by hand first. Put 9 16ths on it and get it just where it starts to snug up and pop it from the top to seat the seal on the top. And then I can com uh, continue to tighten down that clamp. I move to the third clamp and do the exact same thing. Set it in place. I'm going to tighten it down a little bit. Now I'm going to smooth this as far back as I can go before I start hitting um, you know, my, my clamp back here in my bracket. Um, again, I'm going to take my 9 16 and get it to where it's just starting to bite down, seat that rail, and then continue to tighten down that clamp. Once that's done, I'm going to take my prop rod. I've got the, the part that snaps onto the ball stud right here. Just snap it right onto the ball stud, lift it up, and drop it into the clip. I'm going to repeat that same process on the opposite side. All right, next what we're going to do is install our clip receivers to the top of the cover. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our packet that has the clip receivers in there. It's also got uh, some backing studs that are threaded and also some uh, Phillips head screws. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this up. We're going to slide our backing studs into the holes from the bottom side. Next we're going to take our Phillips head screws, run them through our clip receiver and then line them up to the threaded holes uh, in those backing studs. Take a Phillips head screwdriver and install them. You want to make sure that the clip receiver is oriented to where the opening on the clip receiver faces uh, our clips. You're going to do that on both sides of the cover. Now we're going to go ahead and take our cover. We're going to set it up on top of the rails right behind the bed of the truck, or right behind the cab of the truck, rather. Uh, Rotate this down to where it's pushed right up against the bulkhead on, on the frame. This is what our elevator bolt assembly looks like. We're going to take that apart. We're going to pull off the lock washer, a flat washer, and one rubber washer. Set that to the side. Make sure the last rubber washer is fitted around the base of that elevator bolt. We're going to take the elevator bolt and slide it through the top of the cover. That's also going to slide through the aluminum rail that sits off the side of the cover. Now here's where that elevator bolt is coming through. So we're going to take our uh, rubber washer, flat washer, and lock washer, and we're going to slide it up that elevator bolt. And then we're going to take our star knob that we took off earlier, and we're going to go ahead and reconnect it to the elevator bolt at this time. Now we're just going to raise that star knob up to where it starts to touch but we're not going to tighten it down just yet. First, we need to align the cover. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Now, one panel at a time, we're going to fold the cover back towards the tailgate. 
Each panel we fold down, we're gonna check it, make sure it's centered in between the rails. This sets the alignment of the cover. Once we've got the alignment set, we're gonna go ahead and slowly uh, fold the cover forward. We wanna make sure we don't shift the cover around as we do this. And when we get it up to the front, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down the star knobs on each side. Now we don't need to worry about getting them over tight, we just wanna get them nice and snug. All right, now always remember with the backflip G2, the VP, and the Fibermax, before you can close the cover, you have to first close the tailgate. Now, the ridge line is gonna be a little bit different in that it has a tailgate that opens like a car door. Uh, now, before you can close that, you also have to first lift the cover, then close the tailgate. You can close the cover on top of the tailgate. Well, that concludes the installation. If you have any questions, call the experts. We're here to help you out.